you have the app test annotation over your test method, and uh, in your test method, you have um, a line that says assert, and you assert something, and it has a form uh, assert, um, e it could be assert equals or assert true, and uh, you have an expected value and you have a result. Um, so here we're adding a bunch of money to the money bag, and uh, we're testing to see if the result is what we expected. The, uh, we're testing a behavior of the money class, and uh, it's that adding uh, adding money of the same currency uh, will uh, increase the amount of that currency you have. Uh, I'll just fire up. Hello. Eclipse. So this is what the money class looks like. Um, you have uh, you basically have two fields, amount and currency, and the, the way it's supposed to behave is um, if you add additional um, if you add additional uh, currency of the same type. Um, You have money, and it has a currency and a uh, amount field. Let's just leave it at that for now. Um, sorry, I opened the tests. So. Um, here a uh, test money uh, J unit uh, test case, and um, all I'm doing is I have I create a uh, I instantiate money with one peso and another peso, and I'm testing uh, the equals uh, method of the class. And well, I expect that uh, two uh, instances of money will be equal if they have the same amount and the same currency. Um, and uh, I have here. Uh, two pesos, and it's not equal to one peso. Pretty simple, I guess. Um, and one dollar should not equal a peso. So if I want to run this, or not. turns green. Um, so that means it worked. Um, I can make that test fail if I say assert true. see uh, the test failed now um, because, well, a peso does not equal a dollar. Well, if I'm losing people, uh, let me know. So, yeah. So assert methods, you saw just now I used assert true, and basically um, you uh, use them to uh, say that um, this is what you this is what you expect to be uh, the state after this point in the test. 
So if I want to uh, make this test fail, uh, you just saw I used, I changed this assert false to assert true, but uh, I could also try something like Just import everything. <coughs> and now the test fails. Um, so if I remove this. works, turns green because um, a PESA is not null. Um, if I delete this, and that, that should work. Does everybody get that? Um, I deleted the app before. And uh, now, it's, now the Tesla is null. All right. Um, let's move on from there. Um, so we just saw the syntax. You have assert um, and the type of thing you're trying to assert, the uh, type of the variable and, and the expected value, and uh, the uh, actual value of the object you're using. So you can call it from uh, your IDE, Eclipse, like I just used. Um, you can use ant scripts to call them if you want to uh, call them automatically from something on the command line. Um, and uh, there's a, uh, there are two ways, common ways of structuring your projects. So uh, this is the way we generally do it at uh, ONB. Uh, you create a new source folder called test, and you put all of your tests in uh, package names, so uh, as the same as the thing they're testing, and uh, you add dot .test. So I'm uh, testing my money example package in uh, com.onb.moneyexample.test, and uh, I was testing the money class, so I created a test suite called test money. The alternative is uh, to put them in their own package. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, I fudged that up. Oh. Uh, I already worked through the money example, so uh, I guess we won't spend too much time on that. Any time at all. And uh, we can move on to test driven development. Hello, no, we're not, all right, I'll, just, I'll use this again. Uh, Test-driven development is a software development philosophy where tests are central um, and uh, test-driven development is a software development philosophy where tests are central um, and uh, the uh, rule that we try to follow is only write code to fix a failing test. Um, we'll see what that means in a little while, but um, if that seems a little backwards to you, uh, I guess that's normal. So the uh, traditional development cycle is uh, design, code, and then test. You get a uh, specification from a client um, you try to design um, how you implement the system. Um, you start implementing it, and then finally towards the end you run your tests. And usually you find a lot of them aren't quite working. And I, I, it's a problem with that sort of development where you have a big project and you try to design it all and then implement it all. So the test-driven development cycle is um, 
super factor. Um, it'll, so it's kind of reversed. You start with the tests, and then you code, and then you do what's called refactoring. Refactoring is, uh, I guess, it's it's like redesigning. Um, sorry. Oh well, there's a quote. Uh, well, let's go here. Um, this is a, a famous quote from Martin Fowler. Uh, Refactoring is a disciplined technique for restructuring an existing body of code, altering its in internal structure without changing its external behavior. Its heart is a series of small behavior-preserving transformations. Uh, so if we want to break that down a bit, um, you try to uh, do, s you make changes to the code to make it easier for yourself. Maybe you want to change a method name to make it more readable, or you notice that you're repeating yourself, you're duplicating some code somewhere, so you extract that into another method and then just call the method in the different places. Or um, you have an inheritance somewhere, but you realize that uh, you don't need it. Um, you uh, instead just uh, use composition, you uh, add another class instead of subclassing to something, like you add another field to something. Um, and uh, behavior preserving, uh, refactoring shouldn't change the way your code works. It, you should, um, you'll see that that's uh, useful with test-driven development because, um, sorry, you'll see that test-driven development is useful for uh, giving you a free hand to refactor your code because um, when you have your suite of automated tests, you'll know whether or not um, you change the behavior of your code. Um, maybe you want to pull some, pull out another method um, so that you avoid code duplication and just call that method. And you can test to see that all of the other uh, methods in your class still work by running your automated test suite. And maybe if something breaks, you can uh, you can see. Uh, which method in your sorry, which test is failing, and then go to the uh, code uh, that's being tested so and fix that. Test first. The first thing you write are uh, the tests, and uh, the reason is uh, tests specify the behavior of the component. A test is like a contract. Um, you say that you know this test doesn't fail. It means that you know your code uh, your code will do this thing. Um, it's like if you, uh, a, a test is like specifying part of your API. This is how um, the method in your class is supposed to be called, and uh, this is what sort of result it should return in this kind of situation. Um, and tests guide design. If you write your tests first uh, to test some small bit of functionality, the programmer is forced uh, to uh, get that test to pass and not uh, code everything all at once. And uh, you have a shorter feed, sorry, please. So how do you test it in the uh, I'm sorry? How do you test if there are still no holes within? Oh, well, you write a test and then it fails because you have no code written. And then you write your code to try to get your test to pass. So, uh, the way is you, you write your tests, and then you code a little to get them to pass, and then uh, you notice maybe you didn't write, uh, you didn't test everything, and there's another place where the test doesn't work. Or there's another kind of test you can write where your code doesn't work, so you write that test, and then you get it to pass. Are, are you still with me? Okay. And uh, writing a test for a component is done by the programmer who's building that component. It's not something you delegate to QA people or to junior programmers at the very end of the project. All right. Um, management implications. Uh, one approach is if 
if your code has no automated test case written to prove that it works, it must be assumed not to work. Um, and uh, your team leaders uh, of your projects can reject code that's submitted without unit tests. Um, unit tests make it easier to read and QA and uh, manage your code. Um, other implications, software that without automated tests cannot be economically refactored. When you uh, have messy code and you want to clean it up, so you change something to uh, make it easier to read or make it more efficient, uh, depending on your needs, uh, you sometimes cause your tests to fail again, tests that were passing already. Um, and when you do that, you can see where the errors were uh, and go fix that part of your code. If you don't have that, um, when you try to refactor, you might break your code and uh, not know what change caused it to stop working. Um, uh, automated unit level testing of Java classes is essential to is an essential ingredient to continuous integration. Uh, continuous integration is another uh, software uh, philosophy where you try to make sure that your modules that are supposed to together always do. I don't really want to get too much into it. So we'll uh, go ahead to uh, best practices. Tests shouldn't be dependent on other tests. What that means is, um, let's say you have, you shouldn't be doing something where you have, say, sum one in test, in addition test one, um, and then you use that same, uh, and that uh, sum one is like still in scope in value. test two. Uh, don't rely on the ordering of test cases. We saw that again. Uh, you know, this won't work if I switch the two test cases. It's just a bad idea. Um, read test data from a relative path or the class path. Right. That's uh, not that important. Uh, avoid code duplication in test cases. Um, it's, you shouldn't be repeating yourself. Uh, well, TDD, test should fail first to assure that the test is okay. Um, it's possible to, uh, well, you learn something from when your test fails. Sometimes you don't get the, the, uh, same, the error message you were expecting to get when you wrote it, and uh, that's informative. Separate production and test code. Uh, so you saw the, the way we did it. Um, oh, I closed the package explorer. Well, that's a pain. Uh, Anyway, uh, you saw that we had uh, a source folder and a separate test folder, and uh, that's typically the way uh, you organize your tests. Use automated tools to measure test coverage. Uh, I don't have anything like that today, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, robot, I guess, if any of you have heard of that. Um, debugging with tests. Uh, you, I guess you've had experience before where uh, you know you use a lot of printf statements or system out print line uh, just to see if your value if your variables have the values you think uh, they're getting. And uh, the best practice is to use a unit test instead because. Um, you eventually want to delete your print statements before your code goes into production, but your unit tests will continue to add value if you make a new version of your uh, application or anything like that. Um, and use tests to reproduce the bugs you find. Um, the point is to have an automated suite of tests that you can keep running and uh, fix the bug until your tests pass, obviously. Um, what, so, uh, Sometimes you, uh, it's tempting to uh, be lax in your discipline. Uh, 
you change your code and test fails and uh, you decide, you know, whatever, I'll do it tomorrow or something, and then you keep putting it off and more and more tests fail as you change your code. And just a reminder, you know, don't do that. Fix, uh, when you change your code and it makes a test fail, fix it right away. Uh, optimize your test suite. Legacy testing, so uh, this last bit is about um, when you're assigned a project that you know, have been around for a long time and uh, the people that made them didn't write tests as they were doing them, what can you do? So it's, you know, you think sometimes, you know, there are no tests on this project and it's been around for years. Oh, what, I mean, I'm not going to bother writing tests. But some tests are better than no tests. So think in terms of cost-benefit analysis. Uh, you prioritize the common case, and then you start looking for edge cases, uh, corner cases where you know you're setting variables of extreme values, or uh, maybe things that should make you throw an exception and test those. Uh, ba sorry, boundary conditions, uh, air conditions, extreme conditions, extreme conditions, uh, maybe boundary condition for two or more uh, values of your variable. Add tests before fixing bugs, add tests before refactoring. And uh, I have uh, one more thing, exact uh, task for you guys to try. Um, I don't have any starter code for you uh, for this, uh, but I would like you to try to do it in a TDD sort of way where you write your tests first. Um, so a, a to-do list in memory. So I just want something that behaves like, uh, you know how you have a checklist of, I don't know, maybe your errands or uh, tasks you have to do, uh, like go to the grocery, uh, take out the garbage, walk the dog, I don't know. So just something to uh, simulate that and uh, just do everything in memory. You don't need to uh, save anything to a database, obviously. Uh, just create a class um, that I guess is your to-do list. Um, and uh, ha maybe have a class of items uh, that uh, you know you can add to your to-do list or uh, uh, you know, check off when they're done. So, um, and uh, if possible, I guess that should be the last thing. Uh, I'd maybe try to make it sortable by date created. Uh, I. That might be a, a bit much with the time we have left for you guys. Um, well, let's try it. Uh, I'll just I'll just go around and uh, help people out.